Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss boat shoes. I discuss different styles, how to wear them, what you should buy, how to take care of them, and of course, history. In the early 1930s, Paul Sperry looked at his dog and was surprised that he had an amazing amount of grip on the ice. Upon closer inspection of the dog's pads on his feet, he realized that there was a slight herringbone pattern. Intrigued by this pattern, Paul started actually carving a herringbone pattern into his shoes and voila, he had more grip. Sperry was an ardent sailor and into boats and so he needed a shoe that actually had a good grip on wooden deck, even if it was wet. The process of getting the ridges in your shoe soles is also known as siping. And as you can see here, there are very fine lines in a herringbone or wave pattern, which gives you that extra grip when you're on a wet surface that is very smooth. This concept has actually been invented in 1923 by John F. Sipe, and it was named after him because of that. At first, Sperry used black soles, but he quickly realized that they would leave marks all over the boat deck, which looked ugly. Subsequently, he switched to white soles because they didn't leave any marks. In 1935, the first Sperry Topsider boat shoe or deck shoe was introduced to the market, and it was a mid-brown shoe with mid-brown leather laces, and uh, that was the birth of the boat shoe as you know it today. Next, let's talk about the characteristics of boat shoes. The traditional boat shoe came in brown, but today you can find all kinds of colors, such as this one in Nantucket red or in navy blue with green. You can also find them in yellow, blue, and purple, and basically any other color under the sun. Traditionalists stick with brown, but personally, I like to mix it up and have some fun colors for casual events we want with my shorts. In terms of leather, usually these boat shoes or deck shoes are made with a water repellent finish, such as the Chrome XL from Horween, simply because the original purpose was to use it in a maritime setting. An important feature of the traditional boat shoe is that it's hand sewn, so you can see hand sewing all along. In addition to that, it has the moccasin toe construction, which is also sewn by hand, though today sometimes they're sewn by machine. To learn more about moccasins and driving mocks and the difference to deck shoes and boat shoes, please check out this guide here. Boat shoes traditionally feature a 360 degree lacing system, which means that you have this white leather shoelace go once all around. In theory, it helps to tighten the shoe. In practice, it doesn't really, because it gets a little loose and leather also stretches. But it's simply a look that is characteristic of the boat shoe. Most boat shoes in the market will feature two rows of eyelets. Sometimes you find them with three. If you want to go for a pure experience, go with two. The original laces were made in leather and had the same color as the uppers. Today, they're often contrasting, mostly in yellow, sometimes in white, and it just adds this extra casual flair. Sometimes you will find something that looks like a boat shoe, but it has a Vibram sole with a strong profile, and technically it's not a boat shoe anymore. In order for it to be a boat shoe, it has to have white soles, and it's very classic and characteristic. Of course, fashion forward people sometimes go with yellow, blue, or red soles, but they're not very timeless and not very classic. So if you strive for something that stands the test of time, go with a white boat shoe sole. In terms of the sole profile, you will find brands like Sebago, which have these thick ridges, and then others like Eastland that have these thin ridges. In theory, the thin ridges are better for a deck and these are better for streetwear. In practice, I haven't noticed much difference between the thin ridges and the thick ridges. You're probably more likely to get a little piece of gravel in the thick ones, but at the end of the day, it's a matter of choice. For everyday wear, boat shoes can basically replace your sneakers and they're particularly popular in summer, any kind of sea or lake setting. The subject of heated debate is whether you should wear boat shoes with or without socks. I'm gonna settle that right now. Most people wear them barefoot, especially when you're in a setting on a deck on a boat, simply because you have a better grip and it suits the original purpose and style. 
Of course, when it's a little cooler outside and you're not in that setting, you can wear socks with them. Personally, I prefer to wear them without socks. If you're concerned that your feet sweat too much when you're barefoot, simply get a cotton insert or you can also go with these socks that you don't see and then you get the best of both worlds. You get the barefoot look, but you don't sweat as much. So when should you wear road shoes and when should you avoid them? First of all, it is a summer shoe and therefore you should not wear it during the winter time. Road shoes are best paired with slim jeans or pants such as khakis, chinos or slacks. And because of the casual character, they often look good when, let's say the jeans is kind of folded up so it looks like a turnip or a cuff. I also like to wear them with shorts, seersuckers or Nantucket reds because it can make a statement but it's a very casual one and a relaxed one. Boat shoes are a big step up from sneakers and they also work well with denim and jeans in darker tones or also white. They look particularly good in that setting if you combine them with a polo shirt and if you want to learn more about polo shirts, check out our guide here or an Oxford cloth button down shirt because it just fits that whole East Coast type heritage of the shoe. Because of its casual heritage, it's not a good shoe to be worn with a suit, a blazer, or a sport coat. That being said, you'll find people wearing boat shoes with their blazer, and if you can pull it off, good for you. Overall, it's a shoe that's great for the beach, for the lake, and any other casual setting. It's not suited for the office or any formal occasions. It's also a great shoe when you travel because you can easily take it on and off. When you buy a new pair of boat shoes, sometimes the leather can be very hard and you have to break them in. The easiest way to do that is to get into the shoe, tighten it, and then make it really wet so the leather can conform to your foot and dry that way. If you don't want to do that, simply wear them a few times, but try not to wear them for the first time on a long hike or in a long distance because you may end up with blisters. Keep it to short distances. The leather gets softer over time and once they're broken in, they're really comfortable. So how do you take care of your boat shoes? Ideally use an emulsion-based shoe polish, either in the color or in neutral, like the one here. And um, it's important to use those because they soak into the leather. I find these turpentine wax pastes um, are a little too much. I only use them very rarely because they add a layer of waterproofing. But if you only use them, you see cracks of the wax and it's simply too much for the leather and the look is not as good. For every five times I use the emulsion polish, I use the can turpentine wax polish once. If you take care of your shoes, they'll develop a nice patina. However, one of the problems of boat shoes is that they have all of these ridges and the mox construction. So if you're in a dusty environment, they get dirty very quickly. In that case, I suggest you use a toothbrush and some water and some saddle soap to clean the shoes. Afterwards, stream with shoe polish. It will last you longer and develop a nicer patina if you keep them dirt-free. Once they're wet, either through a rain or because you wash them, make sure to dry them, but in a natural setting. Do not put them on the radiator. Do not use a hot air dryer. Simply let them air dry naturally. Don't put them in the sun either. Just like with any shoe, you should use a shoehorn to put them on. It will help you to keep the heel in shape. Of course, since it's a softer shoe, you may also want to slip in without one, and that's okay too. Your shoe will last you longer if you use a shoe horn every time. If you get stains on your boat shoes, try to use a little bit of vinegar and water and rub on it and it should come off and then apply some shoe polish afterwards. Now that you know how to treat your shoes, what to pick, what to go for, the question arises of where to buy your boat shoes. Today you can find dozens of boat shoe makers in the market. You find anything from made in China with the cheapest materials to all made in the US with US made leather. A high-end boat shoe will cost around $300, low-end you can start at $25. I suggest you invest at least $150 because it gives you a better leather quality. And if you want to learn what brands we recommend specifically, please check out our full guide here. For even more information about classic men's style, please sign up to our email list here. See you next time.